We prayed for revival. We prayed for large numbers. We are now living those greater things. Foundations are very important. Uh, when the foundations are people like the Intignaps, then you know that what's going to grow on that foundation will be good. But God, he's far bigger. That's why you can trust him. David's attitude was, God, I am overwhelmed with the privilege of being able to do anything at all for you. Trace the origins of Calvary Christian Church and you'll find a church founded on faith, not just for the immediate fulfilment of God's promises, but also to ensure an enduring legacy for future generations. Faith has been woven in the fabric of Calvary since the beginning, when Charles Entignat preached to a small group of people at a house in South Townsville in Queensland, Australia. Expansion followed the conversion of Mrs. Howell, who generously contributed the equivalent of $5,000, leading to the procurement of a tent to accommodate the increasing numbers attending church gatherings. The church secured its first permanent home in 1934 when it purchased the Masonic Hall in Sturt Street for about £1,000. The work started in Townsville under the, uh, the directorship of the two Eggingdale boys that came from McNaid in Ingham who felt the call of God to come to Townsville. And um, they didn't know nobody in Townsville, and, um, but they took a step of faith. And uh, as they arrived in Townsville uh, that afternoon, you know, they didn't have anywhere to go. So um, they slept on the uh, platform of the uh, Garbutt Railway Station that night. And then the next day they began to uh, make inquiries around the town here. And eventually um, they contacted some Christians and Marge Howell and her family were some of the original people that uh, uh, came into the church and as the, uh, the numbers grew, you know, uh, uh, they rented the uh, YWCA Hall uh, in the city building in town in Flinders Street. Of course, you know, the rest is history. In 1933, a niece of my father's, Emmy Baskell, and her husband, Willie Baskell, who was an elder of the church, invited us over to Magnetic Island where they had an Easter camp and stayed in their hut with them. And our whole family were water baptised together on that one day. And I remember walking up the beach after as if I was walking on air. Dozens of big mango trees, and it was like you're in the shade the whole time. And that's underneath those mango trees where they used to all sing and the guitars. And I remember many people were baptised in the Holy Spirit. Then that time came when Pastor Joe Bruce came to Townsville, and that was during the war years. Had great big open air meetings outside Louth's Hotel. And he had this thunderous voice, he didn't need a microphone. And he would just preach the gospel out there in the streets. And um, my dad used to always say that many servicemen would kneel down outside the open air ring there. They'd even hold up the traffic and give their lives to the Lord and he, he would say then they would go overseas to the war and he said whether they ever come home again we never know but they received the Lord Jesus at that time. The Calvary Temple Church in Sturt Street under the guidance of uh, Daddy Armstrong, that's Norm Armstrong's father, they paid a thousand pounds for it way back in those days and um, but it was a step of faith. Every month when they had to make the payment to the bank, they had to pray that money in. A sprawling city of wide streets, Townsville is the industrial, administrative and commercial capital of North Queensland. And at first glance, life in the main thoroughfare, Flinders Street, moves at the leisurely pace common to most tropical cities. But this is deceptive. Development is coming quickly to Townsville. By the time pastors David and Mari Cartledge arrived in 1970, the church was steadily growing, averaging 67 members. The team was strengthened as Pastor John and Val Lewis moved to Townsville, where John worked as the youth pastor for four years. It was during that time the church expanded its Sturt Street building, adding an extension as well as changing the name to Calvary Temple Assembly of God. And, uh, and I said, look, David, I said, while I'm here, I said, Reg Klimanoff suggested that I approach you about coming to Townsville. And this is the amazing thing. 
And he said to me, he said, Keith, he said, I'll tell you one thing. I won't say no, but he said, I'll pray about it. He used to go down into the church building and pray and seek the Lord. So that's where the Lord spoke to him specifically out of scriptures. David, I said, what's the verdict? Have you heard from God? He said, yes, I have. He said, God's given me two messages. He said, which I cannot ignore. And I said, what are they? He said, one, he said, take my message to the north. Number two, he said, there came a man from the east. God had it all under control, see. And so uh, in 1971, in April, David came to Townsville. We had a move of the Holy Spirit uh, within a year. But this brought about a cleansing in the church. It just grew and grew and grew. And we had to knock the wall out and make more room and, and it never stopped. We actually, when we were living in the uh, manse, there was a couple living in the units next door and they'd throw rocks on our roof because they didn't like the church. They are now AOG pastors. <laughs> He came into the church one day, he decided he'd have a look and he came into the church and he heard someone speaking in tongues and an, and an interpretation and he went over to his wife and he said, God is in that place and then they came in and got saved. <laughs> there was a difference, the Holy Spirit was in that room and I, I just felt that. But the, the miracle of all of that was my husband was not a, a Christian, not a born again Christian. He came along to church with me that night and during the altar call, he put his hand up. David and John, it was like a, a, John and da, a John and David and Jonathan relationship, really, the two of them. They were very close. They worked together closely in the church. One time, John was praying for someone, and instead of the person going back, John started going back, and David had to come and hold him up while he was praying for people, and it worked the other way. So, you know, they just, worked well together. It's almost like they knew what the other one was thinking. 92 acres for 182,000. That was mammoth. But in the, in 78, uh, this church opened, the school started, and a Bible college started, all in the same year. Now that's got to be um, more than uh, most people dare to take on. Pastor Cutley was a man of faith. He believed in faith, and that's what I'm exercising today still, faith. If I don't have that faith, I wouldn't be where I am today. Perhaps the biggest step of faith came in 1977 when Calvary sold the Sturt Street building and moved to the Pimlico factory. In the search for more space, Pastor David felt led to purchase 92 acres in Mount Louisa for $182,000 where the church could build a new auditorium. Miracle after miracle took place as the church began work on the new auditorium with members of the church congregation willingly volunteering on the building project. So it was with great joy the new church building was opened on October 13, 1978. And the faith steps gained momentum, as in the same year, John and Lorraine Friend pioneered Rima Bible College, and Graham Eaton, Verna Hunter, Karen Mackerel, and Jean White started Calvary Christian College. David was always looking beyond. He saw this land for sale, and there was, they were to be five acre lots. And uh, so in approaching the, the gentleman that owned it, he, he wasn't willing to sell it as a whole. It was 92 acres. We went out and climbed through the barbed wire fence and stood on the land and prayed over the land. And, and uh, David got this little pebble and this little stone out of the creek bed and took it home and it sat on his desk. And every day he'd hold that stone, claiming that land. That rock, I remember Pastor Cutley having a rock and you get a piece of sand and, and you know, you say, no, I'm going to be here forever. It wasn't easy, but we came together as a family. We took that faith offering. I remember that the day that happened in Pimlico Refectory um, and the amount that was paid, $182,000 for 92 acres of land. It was unheard of. That was an impossibility. But in 1978, on uh, the 18th of June, we took the first of our offerings. We called it a miracle offering, and it was. But on that day when the offering was totaled up, $182,000 had been promised. 
It was the exact amount that God had showed me in prayer the morning before we went to the service. I had written down that amount, put it in my office drawer. Now at that time, as near as we've been able to establish, and I've asked everywhere about it, that was the largest offering ever taken in a single service in any church of any denomination in this country. It was a staggering miracle thing. But it inspired so many others with the possibilities. And he'd go in there when the building was being built and he'd stand up on the platform, there was nothing. He'd stand up and he'd look and he'd see all the seats and he'd see all the people sitting there. And of course there was no one there physically, but he would see them. In the spirit, you see something in God and the things that, I mean, it was, it was the same with building the school. I mean, he came up with all his ideas. Some of them I told him was, that's a bit ridiculous, but you know, he had it. And then the, the Bible college, he could see it. And so you do it. And you know, there's an element of faith, uh, believing I say, is, is to do with obeying. We are now living those greater things right now. We were only a small church. When we first came out here, it was just rock and dirt. And we're going, okay, this is gonna be that church. Couldn't see it, but we had enough faith in uh, God and the vision of our pastor, Pastor Murray, uh, Pastor Cartledge, David Cartledge and Pastor Murray. And we just went with them, we just went with it. And as you can see today, every single thing that we prayed for with him, what was his vision, is in, come to fruition. A pioneer spirit breaks new ground. You break down, and in that you can break down walls of prejudice. You're breaking things down. Well, in those early days, that's when the dancing first came in. Well, you know, we called it the Pentecostal hop. <laughs> it's like so we sort of, when we sang choruses, we sort of jumped around and we, we called it dancing. But, you know, but a lot of criticism, in fact, it nearly split the movement at one stage, at one of the conferences, the main um, national conference a few years later. Wow. The conference that year was very significant. For the first time, most delegates stayed in hotels in luxury instead of the usual campsites. A record number attended and the theme was go forward and few could have known how true that was. Yonggi Cho inspired everyone greatly with his teaching on goal setting and church growth. After all, he had done it and was most effective in convincing the church leaders that they could do it too. There was an incredible sense of possibility. For the first time in our fellowship's history, I felt that. It affected my life and I know it affected the lives of many, many other ministers. From there, we've seen just an, an awesome upsurge of the power of God and church planning in our nation. The motivation behind Raymond Bible College was for one and only reason, really, and that was to train church planters. And I delight in the 10 years that I spent at Calvary. What great years they were. I got saved there, baptised in the Holy Spirit, baptised in water, married, and ultimately came into ministry to serve God in that capacity. I go to Rima Bible College uh, for a time and uh, graduate from that to sit under the ministry of Pastor David Cartledge. I was, when I went to Bible colleges, um, Rima Bible College back in those days, in 88 and 89, uh, David Cartledge was my first part senior pastor, and then it handed over to Neil and Sabrina Scott after that. But to see all the people, I went through a class, my first year class was the biggest class we'd ever had, certainly at that point, it was 54 students in the first year class. And to see that there's people and there's, leaders all around the known world now in, in Europe, everywhere, who've done Rima Bible College, who are out serving God, planting churches, that, discipling people, making leaders, putting up new campuses, starting new campuses. To see what God has done and continues to do is so exciting. And that's why it's so exciting to be a part of Calvary Leadership College now, to see what God's gonna do with this generation. And then asked me if I would be prepared to uh, literally pioneer the school and I said yes. My two eldest ones were the foundational students. Um, look, they, they really enjoyed Calvary. We had all the VIPs there, the counsellors and so forth and uh, I was nervous as a kitten 
and to see it grow and to kids see kids enjoying going to school. Marvellous. And there's a, the new college there for um, kids on the spectrum, autism spectrum, to see them running towards their teachers instead of running away from their teachers. I mean, uh, that's pretty cool. Really for me, when I think of my story and where I am today, uh, there isn't a way to describe what's happened in my life and, and the difference Jesus has made without Calvary Christian College and without Calvary Christian Church. And so I certainly wouldn't be the person I am today. I don't even like to ponder really for too long uh, what may have eventuated, but our sight between our college and school really has changed my life for the better. That pioneer spirit is in the foundations of Calvary. A little bit over 29 years ago, Calgary Townsville sent us out to Borneo, me and my family, and uh, we've been here ever since. You've been so involved with all this as well. You actually planted seeds here uh, in this place, and uh, of course around the world, but uh, for us here in this place here in Borneo, so that a lot of the day people can actually come to know Christ as well. So I want to thank you on behalf of everybody here for what you've done. And uh, the last hundred years, you know, um, Calvary has, has planted many churches and has uh, sent out missionaries and sown seeds everywhere. So, and as a result, God has rewarded us and rewarded you guys well with a lot of souls. So on, on behalf of everybody, thank you and keep up the great work. God bless you all. And have a wonderful celebration. Take care. Bye. In the Capricorn region, in the seaside town of Yapoon, the first services for Yapoon Family Church were being held with Ernie and Cheryl Peters named senior pastors on May 23, 1983, leading the church faithfully for more than 30 years. Likewise, in Emerald, Harvest Life Christian Church had started meeting with pastors Ron and Mary Anning, pastoring there for 20 years. In 1988, Neil and Sabrina Scott took on the leadership of Calvary and were instrumental in paying off the debt and seeing our small groups increase. In 1997, under the leadership of Tony and Eunice Hallow, there was a focus on missions trips, especially in areas where the gospel had been restricted. The Hallows also initiated the establishing of a house for kids at risk. On the Sunshine Coast in 1999, Pastor Steve and Marion Penny launched King's Christian Church after taking on Budrum Mountain Assembly of God. These churches with decades of history set the stage for when Pastors James and Sam McPherson were named senior pastors in 2007 and led the church, which was now named Calvary Christian Church, to become a multi-site church. Um, it was pretty amazing. Um, it was just, you know, it was growing at a rapid rate, seeing massive amounts of people getting saved. Um, so for Jackie and I, just being in that environment um, was just, you know, it was incredible. But you know, in Townsville at that time, I remember, you know, the altars being full of, you know, 30 to 50 people saying yes to Jesus, particularly on a Sunday evening service. And there was just such an excitement for the harvest. Mm. And we were literally seeing it with our own eyes. Moving to Townsville for Tegan and I was an incredible faith adventure and joining the Calvary team was so exciting. We saw so many young people impacted and just coming and experiencing the, the goodness of God. In fact, at one point, Red Bull, the company, rang us up and said, hey, we've got a car. We've heard all the young people on a Friday night are with you guys, can we come? And, and I mean, that's just one of the crazy things that was part of the faith adventure of, of joining the Calvary team that just invested and sowed into so many young people. We know Calvary has always had such a passion for young people and for developing leaders. And we saw so many young people come to know God in that time. And then many are still serving God within the Calvary group and also beyond. And uh, we just counted a real privilege to have been a part of Calvary for such a significant time. So yeah, went, went to some chaplains, went to the uni, found out we could do O Week. Um, didn't even really have a team at the time. Uh, Matt Pappas was a big part of that. And I can't remember the exact numbers, but over that week, 
I think we had about 350 people circle yes to church. And we remember just being like, is this real? Do you know what I mean? Like, this is just stupid. And the craziest part, that first Sunday, and I think we had 72 uni students come. In 2010, Calvary took on leadership of Kings, with Calvary Sunshine Coast the first of many campuses. In 2013, Calvary planted a campus in Cairns, far north Queensland, and the campus has grown from just two couples to hundreds meeting each Sunday. Yeah, I, I do remember when we became a multi-campus church, I was a part of the board at the time, and um, we took on Sunshine Coast, uh, Calvary Sunshine Coast, but it, it changed our impact. Um, we, we took on the church, but it actually gave us more strength. Over time, we started to gain more in strength and what we could do, where two congregations could stand together, people stepping out in faith together, people sacrificially giving together. And then we started to see an impact of more and more campuses. We were able to do more. I do remember when we became a multi-site church and uh, it wasn't any longer just Calvary Townsville. We had Calvary Sunshine Coast. And my memories of that time are just really excited memories. I, I think it was something we were always um, knew might have been on the horizon. Calvary had always been a significant church. Just even back from the David Cartledge days, it was there's something in the soil of just faith and blessing and favour. And I felt like we just had this amazing moment to step into prayers that had already been prayed, stuff that was already in the soil. Church planting has always been a part of the DNA of Calvary, but it was amazing to see it coming back to the forefront as we saw Calvary Cairns and many more grow. Doing Calvary Leadership College in Cairns, God started stirring my heart and God was already stir stirring Pastor James's heart and we got dreaming and scheming and praying and we felt like God was talking to us. It was just this really exciting time of, okay, We'll go, we don't know what that means. We thought if we could see what was happening in Tans will happen in Cairns, then we wanted to be a part of that. Mm. Obviously the anointing that's on Calvary Church that predates all the pastors, it's a pioneering church, it's a ground-taking yeah. church. And we were uh, just so excited to be involved uh, with what was happening there and the way that it went really, I think it kind of surprised all of us. We didn't know it was gonna be quite so successful. 2015 was pivotal in Calvary's growth as we launched campuses in Emerald and Yapoon within a matter of months. The following year, Calvary planted a new campus in Rockhampton, expanding our reach in the central Queensland and Capricorn region. In recent years, Calvary commenced services in Blackwater, 75 kilometres from Emerald, establishing a campus in a formerly vacant church facility. Our journey with Calvary has seen our own lives expand. But not only that, I've personally seen so many people's lives being enlarged because of being a part of a multi-site church. In February 2018, Calvary expanded into South Africa when Dustin and Sarah Bell took on leadership of what had been City Life Church. Since then, the church has grown significantly and will become Calvary's hub of expansion into Africa, now led by Tim and Aisha Peters. When I think back to when I was doing CLC, as a Bible college student, I... With a mullet. <laughs> I would not have imagined where we are today. Um, to see, you know, a church moving forward on the other side of the world to help build what's going on in Africa. Um, but praise God that God responds to faith. And as we take steps of faith, we see the impact that Calvary's having reach further and further. I just think it's incredible that God even chooses to use us. I remember being the 17 year old who was new to Calvary, new to youth. And Tegan Wallace, my youth pastor, asked me to sit on the registration table for Youth Alive. And I was like, me? Never imagined us here, but in the same breath. So incredible, so amazing. It's kind of the same yes to one thing, then yes to the next, and then now you're in Africa. <laughs> Registration table to South Africa. That makes sense. <laughs> the kind of impact Calvary is having in South Africa is, is huge already. We're seeing numbers of people come to faith in Jesus. Um, over our Easter weekend, we had 38 first-time decisions for Jesus just across two services. And God's moving powerfully in people's hearts. There's, there's people inviting people along to church and people getting engaged and, and involved in what's happening. In mid-2019, Dustin and Sarah Bell relocated from South Africa to the Sunshine Coast after being invited to take on senior leadership of Calvary. Calvary's ninth location launched in May 2023, pioneering a new campus in Queensland's capital city, Brisbane. In addition to Calvary's work in Australia and South Africa, preparations are underway to launch the first Calvary campus in Papua New Guinea's capital city, Port Moresby, this month. 
Today, as we celebrate our 100 year anniversary, we honour all who have contributed to Calvary's strong foundations of faith. And while there have been challenges and changes, we take time to remember and acknowledge the promises of God that we have seen come to pass. We believe God is still at work within our church, not just for our benefit, but for the blessing of generations that will come after us. Together as one church, we give thanks for God's goodness and faithfulness on this centennial celebration. If God's given you a promise, He's a God of integrity. If He said it, He will do it. And that's the mean to say things look impossible. They will look impossible. But if you've got that from God and He has said it, you don't give up. You hold on.